Welcome back to another episode of Give Me Some Truth. I thought this one was quite interesting, Nate, because you brought the idea of mm -hmm. talking about change. And, you know, I had to reflect a little bit when you mentioned that because our clients go through so many periods of their lives where they do go through significant change and we get to spend those moments with them. So I guess, first of all, I'd like to ask you, what made you think of the topic of change and, uh, what did you think uh, we, we want to all cover in this podcast? Um, I think that w what's interesting to me sometimes is the concepts that we all know very, very well, and we all know how we should feel about them, but we don't know why we should feel that way about them. Like we know something's good or something's bad generally, but in a lot of cases, we don't quite know why. And change kind of falls into that category for me of like, most people resist it. Most people don't like it, but why? You know, and, and so I don't think we talk about it enough um, just the idea in and of itself of this thing that's inevitable, right? We're different tomorrow than we are today than we were yesterday in small incremental ways, right? Um, but why don't we ever talk about it? And so that was just curious to me that we we don't seem to talk about this thing that affects all of us. And so it's it's us personally, right? And then it's in a within our lives, our kids. You know, they grow up, so obviously that changes us, and then our careers, and then we retire, and then we have, you know, marriages and divorces and all these other things that happen. So we're all subject to these changes, but why don't we talk about it more? So it just was a curious topic to me. When I yeah, I, I think that when people hear the word change, they... It reminds me for all those Shit's Creek fans out there, that whole David you face when they get the... Uh, they get the change, you know, you're right. like, Hey, you're looking at changes coming up. And, and I think other people look at it in, in significantly different ways. And I think that one is super helpful and, and one is difficult and we even deal with it in our own business. You know? Well, right. And this for you and I specifically and the people in our firm, it's unique because we've done a fair amount of, of, um, you know, kind of, um, personality tests, behavioral tests, you know, the Myers Briggs and all the other ones that are out there. Uh, we've, we've done enough of them. Um, you interestingly enough score out in the minority as being much more open to change than most people. And so what's interesting is um, you then uh, almost welcome it more and then probably have frustrations when other people don't, whereas the vast majority of other people don't see the idea the same way that you do. So that that's even interesting just within the firm itself. Yeah, I'm very, you know. I'm very change accepting. For sure. Like I, I welcome change. I, I think of that as like, you know, that butterfly moment, you know, sure, you, right. know you just come out of that and, and you're flying. And I, I think that change is super beneficial for in almost every situation. Like, right. you know, if you're, if you're changing, you're adapting, you're getting better in some way. And that's how I see it. I see it from a very optimistic perspective. Um, Cause you choose to look at change in a, in a, um, in the rear view mirror, um, identifying the positives. You don't choose to look at the changes that happened in your life that were neg that, that turned out to be negative. Right. Yeah, I, I, that's fair. And, and that's that's an interesting way to do it because I think most people touch the hot stove, they would look at it from a from a from a negative feedback, a negative response stimuli, right? The idea that I, I this this change happened either to me or because of my own choosing and a negative outcome came, I was worse off as a result. So therefore, I'm not going to do that again because I know what I have right now. And so the idea of going to something different is scary for that reason. Y you're interesting because you don't seem to look at it that way. You look at it and only identify the positives by way of change and not the negatives, which inevitably have happened to you at some point. Having a negative outcome, though, I think is in many cases positive in itself because you learn more about yourself and sure. you learn more about right the process you learn how to maybe not do it again. Right. Um, you know, I, I think that all of those different steps along the way, you know, when we're trying to change, it sucks for a really long time in some cases too. And then all of a sudden you, you realize that all of that was for the good. And I always say this to my kids too. It's like, you know, all the, all the best things in life are hard. And so sure. that's how I, I choose to see it. So things might not happen as fast as I want or with the desired outcome that I may think is going to yep. be out there. But that whole process of going through that change, you will learn something along the way and every step of the way. And that's why I think change is incredibly positive for people. Right. So I looked into this a little bit 
because again, I'm curious about it, but I found a Harvard Business Review article, which I thought was really interesting because it's, it's uh, written by a, a Harvard professor, I believe. Um, I believe she's still there. I should, I should clarify it that way um, because it was written in 2012. So it's dated, but yet it's so still, it could have been written yesterday, which is interesting. So she, she goes through the 10 reasons why people resist change. And we're not going to go through all 10, but the, the one that she identifies first, loss of control, which I thought was really interesting. Um, our, 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 our film guy, Jerry, he's making noise in the background. This has got to be killing him because he knows that he made a mistake because he made some noise in That's the background true, yeah. and he could just see that. You know, we noticed it, but the listeners wouldn't. I'll call it out, but that's okay. Um, so loss of control. And that's an interesting thing when you think about change because you don't necessarily think about the concept of control and change as being as close as they are, but they're, they're so interrelated because change requires the ability to, to give way of the control that you have over the known for the the lost ability to control the unknown, right? And I think that that, that to me is a, a really interesting one just of her 10, that one stands out to me. And maybe one that people don't think about is why they don't like change. Yeah, we're, uh, tons of people are control freaks, myself included, right? So yeah, right. giving that control away is tough, especially right. when the change is kind of mandated upon you as well. I think that's, it's hard and that's why I probably have a skewed view of it is that as being the leaders of our organization, sure. we get to force change upon people and that might not be their favorite thing sometimes when you're like, you know, we're in the middle of adapting, you know, we're going to adapt this technology. You need to do this now, you know? So there is some of that where they right. don't have as much control over it as we do for sure. Right. right? I, I get that. That's a fair criticism. Right. So even within, in, within some level of, of interpersonal dynamic, somebody might have more control over the change than somebody else does. And somebody else might be subject to the change more than the person that's implementing the change. Yeah. Which even that, it, you know, prevents or presents an interesting like control dynamic to it. Um, and I think, you know, how it relates to clients, how about retirement, right? Whether forced or by choice, it, it's a change that's for most people inevitable because most people don't work until the day they pass away. So that alone is an, is an interesting like change um, kind of hurdle, if you will, that people have to try to like get over and then get comfortable on the other side of it. Yeah. I think it's a little bit more difficult if it's forced upon them because they're told you're not, you know, we don't want you here anymore for sure. I think that that has a really negative dynamic for people. Uh, but and also, again, there's less control then less control. Less yes. Control then. Agreed. Agreed. Right? And then that just cascading into retirement, that whole new life that you are setting up for yourself. Yeah. I mean, that's a massive change. And I think people, underappreciate that because you don't do it multiple times. You know, you're going to retire once or like my dad, right. like four times, but you know, it's like you're, you're retiring and you're, you're cascading into a new area of your life. That's uncertain. I think that uncertainty is a little scary as well. Yeah. You're like, what am I going to do with my life? That's a great lead in her next one is excess uncertainty, right? And her first line is if you, excuse me, if change feels like walking off a cliff blindfolded, then people will reject it which is an interesting kind of way to think about it. You're kind of walking into a, a dark room. You're walking into a, you know, something that you don't, you don't have any context for, which is, I think, unfortunately, how some people look at retirement. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Even though it's a positive, it's told to them as a positive. And they might, there's might be aspects of it that they think are positive, but you are still walking into this kind of unknown situation. Well, and people think it's a vacation. Like they think, oh, well, it starts that gonna, way. Yeah. Right. The yeah, first like, few weeks, the first month, it's a vacation. It's great. And then that wears off. Yeah. And then you have to do <laughs> like life exists then like vacation. Life is not vacation. That's why you go on vacation. And so, yes, the first month, maybe even the first year of your retirement might feel like a vacation. But beyond that, you have a new life. It is totally different. I think that's why it's helpful to have somebody that's like, that you can sit down with and, and speak with like a financial advisor that's seen retirement a bunch and right. we can give you context and we do coach our clients. This is some of the soft stuff that, that we do for our clients. You know, we coach clients to get used to the idea and to try to think prior to the time they retire about what they're going to do with their lives. Mm -hmm. And we oftentimes say, Hey, stepping down and work is super positive for you because stepping down allows you to fill the other hours with things that are going to become your ret new retirement lifestyle yeah. as you reduce your hours. I think that's really positive for people to do. And then if they want to hang on to this little work, 
in here and then have your retirement be 75% and your work be 25%. That's great. Yeah. Cause that's a whiplash, right? I mean, you go from, from a hundred to zero that, that is you, you go from 40 hours a week to boom, I'm not working any longer ever. That, that, that is a, that's a big change to, to big change to assume that is going to just be okay. Yes. And then some people don't have the luxury. So some people, that's what it is. But I think to your, your, your earlier point, if you don't have that luxury, then that is even more of a requirement of you than to plant, to, 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 to get yourself into a spot where you can hopefully land softly into that new area. And also knowing what your mindset is, if you're really change resistant and, and you're, 65 years old, you're getting ready for retirement. You should be aware of that. You should have some self-awareness sure, in that. Yeah. And if you're self-aware of that, then you should need to take steps to help mitigate that. How can I change, manage myself, right? Right. Um, and make sure that I'm ready for those steps so it's not such a uh, shock to your whole system. Right, right. Uh, you know, I think one of the last ones that she points out here that I think is great too is just the idea that t change takes work, right? And uh, that maybe that's an obvious because if you think about the idea that staying staying with with something versus going to something different it's easier to stay with something than to move to something different in most cases and so i think that that idea of the work that's involved you think about anything that requires change i'm going to start a new workout program i'm going to start a new you know healthier eating lifestyle i'm going to start a new you know um i'm going to go to bed earlier i mean whatever it might be it requires doing more than what you're doing today in a lot of ways most change i think involves doing more to get there than dropping something off to accomplish change. That's 100% right. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. I likened that to, you know, what is it about almost five years ago? I, I decided to join a gym. I'd never had a, a trainer before because I was stuck, you know, I was just going and lifting weights, but I didn't really have a program Sure. and I needed to do something. I needed to make a big change uh, because I was just feeling like I was stuck in reverse and I needed somebody to boss me around, tell me what to do, go in there and execute a program. And I can remember in the beginning, I could barely get through the warm up, and, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I wasn't like totally out of shape where I was a puddle. I just, I wasn't ready for this sort of stuff. And I can just remember picking myself up from just like I'm on the floor, just sucking air, just sitting there, you know, and you just kept going and going and it got easier and easier. And mentally you just, the workouts are no, easier today than they were when I first did them. They're still really challenging, but mentally I'm a lot stronger to be able to handle that sort of thing now. And I can push through that sort of stuff. You know, when you're sucking air, you don't feel like you're like, this is normal. Now it's a new normal sort right. of situation. So, um, but those first, you, those at the beginning, Oh, the first six months are really hard, hard, really hard, really hard. Yeah. Right? You just got to Like, it's almost more of a mental game than a physical game in that situation and, and a lot of things in business too, you know, in doing life. things in life differently. Like, right. you know, we've, we've had, to, you and I have had to learn how to manage people mm -hmm. more as the firm grows. Right. That's not a natural thing, right. you know, for me at least, you know, because we were, you know, just, just four or five people now we're, you know, over 12. So it's like, you know, just trying to adapt to all of that. That's a lot of change all in one organization that's growing quickly. And so yeah. all of that has to be addressed. Can you think of a moment in your life where you just went through like an incredible amount of change and, and an example there? Um, I'm going to go a slightly different direction on the question. Um, my daughter, Natalie and I, we, there's a, um, he's not a speaker. He was, he was a former military guy. Uh, he, he kind of coined the phrase, embrace the suck. Right. And he, he, he says, do one thing every day that sucks. Kind of, kind of go into the day knowing I'm going to do one thing today that's hard. And that's what, kind of what he means, right? Something that's hard, something that, that, that you maybe don't want to do, something that requires you to um, uh, kind of maybe put forth more effort than you, than you thought you were going to have to. But I think the bigger message that he's delivering in that, in that context is go into the day, maybe seek, knowing you're going to do that, so that you're, you will embrace it more when it happens, right? So it's not like, oh, this bad thing happened to me today. Now I have to try to deal with this. All right, this is my one thing today. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to embrace this thing. And, and obviously maybe, you know, there's two things in a day, whatever it might be. But just the, the concept that you go into the day mentally preparing yourself for the fact that I'm going to have to tackle something today that's, un, that, that's not fun. And that's okay. It's part of my day. And I think that that... So, that that's something I, I kind of like that mantra or however you want to define that. But um, I think, you know, for me, 
um, recently it's been, it's been probably the, the idea of slowing down more, maybe the idea that, um, that you shouldn't always just, you should keep one eye on the future, right? Cause that's what we, that's our whole job is to help you, you know, help them with their future, but don't lose sight of today as well, right? Don't always live six months in advance, right? Think about that because you need to, but at the same time, you know, kind of live the day that's in front of you as well. Well, I mean, it's hard and it's hard to like slow down like that. Of it's course, for, of course. And you have, you have a unique perspective because you're in front of me and I get to, I get to watch you being in front of me in where you are in life in many cases because you're, you're a new empty nester. And so yeah. you just went through a massive change yeah. in your household. And so I, I, you know, we talk about change there and being able to appreciate the moments you had leading up to that change, mm -hmm. you know, to spend more time with your family in those moments and appreciating those moments more. And then also going off and having that change occur and watching you have to adapt to it now, yeah. which I, I, I see you making a few more trips down to Chicago. So yeah, yeah well, right. Yeah. My, uh, we took our son down to Chicago uh, in September to start college down there. And yeah, it's, it's, again, you talk about change in life, right? It was a positive in so many ways, but it's also, there's not the, you know, the, the antithesis to positive isn't always negative, right? Sometimes it's just, it's just different. Right. And so, so there's been a lot of positives, but then there's also just been that kind of different too. Right. So it's not a negative, it's just different, you know, not having, you know, Griff in the house anymore. And, um, and it's just, it's exciting in a way it's frustrating in a way it's hard in a way it's, you know, so it's, it's all those things that, that, uh, that kind of constitute change, right? I think that kind of takes us back to why people dislike it because it makes you be different today than you were yesterday. But you've always said to me like, parenting never gets easier, it just gets different. And, and I yeah. always, I've always, that's always struck me as something you've said, cause you just go those, through these different phases. Yeah, You get out of the toddler phase, you're like, it's gonna get easier. It actually doesn't. And it gets, I, I'm foreseeing as I see my kids grow up, it's going to get more complex, right? Because certain they things get easier, more complex, right? Certain things get easier. Other things that were easy, they're not easy anymore. Yeah. But the, what I'm looking at in the future looks like real world stuff, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Hadley will melt down if she doesn't get like a treat. Sure. When she's 14, yes. she's going to melt down for something that she thinks is a big deal. And when she's 24, <laughs> she's going to melt down. And that, that will be a big deal. Somebody told me one time 24. that when they got home um, from their day, they would s just spend five or 10 seconds in the garage to see if they could hear shouting from in the house <laughs> to know what they're walking into at that moment. Cause that's just when your kids get to be that age, that's what happens. Yeah. It's, it's uh, the volume is higher, but not because somebody is crying cause they didn't get a cookie, but because you know, it's, it's a shouting match about, whatever it might be right again it's just different you know our kids are never going to do that i know that so they'll be they'll be fine they'll be fine totally fine, fine. yeah it's it's the it, it, that's the funny thing too is like when you um uh when you kind of know the phase that like uh other, you know other people are, are about to go through with their kids you're just like this is because there's so many similarities to like these phases that kids go through but then there's like so many like differences too where it's like th these little nuances that make like each person's inner dynamic situation like different and it's, it's fun to watch sometimes it is fun to watch it's fun to watch it's fun to watch when you're not in that in that phase anymore. Uh, yeah yeah you can share in, in their pain a little <laughs> right. bit uh that's right. commiseration but it's also like you see all those different you're talking about change you watch your kids change and you, it's just it's beautiful like it's never it's but it's it's messy you know it's just messy they they go through all sorts of different things and you know eventually they'll what they get their heart broken on as a kid is so much different when you get your heart actually broken. You know, it's like they'll go through all those different phases. You get to watch them. I think that's a great that. way. Like messy is a really interesting adjective for that, for what we're discussing, because um, I think we always have a desire that we want things to in life just to be, um, you know, less clunky. And I think just a lot of life is like that. And I think that that's what makes it tricky is trying to like navigate through and understanding. I mean, we talk about this, you know, as ways to describe something, you know, in a lot of things in life, six out of 10 is as good as you're going to do. You know, if, if you can get slightly better than positive, slightly better, you know, into the positive, that's as good as you're going to do. There, there's no 10 out of 10. 
Six out of 10 in a lot of cases, six to the good, four to the bad. That's a victory. Take that and move on to the next thing. You know, and I think that that's also when we talk about change, like do the idea of trying to strive for a hundred, you know, 10 good and zero bad. That's not a thing. So, you know, if there's more positive than negative, that was good. Take it, move on to the next thing and understand that that's a lot of what comes with it. Hey, 2.9 GPA here. So there you go. There you go. Six out of 10. Very solid. Six out of 10. What, yep. what do you say? Uh, 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 C, uh, C's no C's get degrees C's get degrees it's about 2.9 you roll you roll that up that's almost a B that's, there you go that's, a, right that's a solid B you know what that is that's a, that's a that's a professor that mm, roll, roll up on the wrong side of the bed that's what that is right there that's right I'm sure it's my professor's fault mm -hmm. yeah 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 when, I wrote in, a really when, good when you're lacking a better excuse blame the professor yeah agreed yes yes but you know what I got a degree it's great 2.9 sitting here paper. today just give me the piece of paper yeah. and get me out. Now, Sir and Hadley better have better grades than that. But, you know, I have much higher expectations for them. Well, absolutely. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. If they came to me with, like, a 2.5, I'd be really upset with them. Yeah. That, that's – you don't get a 2.9. You need to – yeah, get at least a 3.0. Right. You just going to round yours up when, when they get to that age? I don't even – I think I'm – How would need, they know that you didn't? Well, probably maybe those this podcast. But. I mean, I think I even rounded up to a 2.9. I'm not even sure. Like, I, you know. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I don't okay. know. Maybe so, I was a 2.88. I, mean, I should go back and wow. look at my transcripts. 28105. No, I didn't do it that way. <laughs> it's at least a reasonable roundup. But, you know, I, I don't think I can round it just, up to a 3. Just nudge that up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, so I think I think we'll talk more about this topic. Um, I, I think it's an interesting topic. I think that we it's something we almost deal with every day with clients. And, and I think that uh, just the more we talk about it, if for no other reason than just being able to kind of say it out loud, there's a cathartic aspect to just that alone. Yeah, you know, change is good and change is positive. It's inevitable. Right. You know, everyone goes through it. And there, there are awful moments in your life, but you'll get through it and be a better person because of it. And I think the second you can change your mindset to looking at all change, I think all change is positive, even if it's negative change, because you can learn important lessons. From You're going to learn something from it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on this episode of Give Me Some Truth. Feel free to leave some comments. And uh, thanks for joining us on this journey with us about change. Walkner Cotton Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor with the SEC. Registration with the SEC does not imply a certain level of skill or training. The opinions expressed by the participants of this podcast are their own and do not reflect the opinions of Walkner Cotton Financial Advisors. All statements and opinions expressed are based upon information considered reliable, although it should not be relied upon as such. Any statements or opinions are subject to change without notice. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. Information expressed does not take into account your specific situation or objectives and is not intended as recommendations appropriate for any individual. Listeners are encouraged to seek advice from a qualified tax, legal, or investment advisor to determine whether any information presented may be suitable for their specific situation. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. Thanks for listening, and for further information, please visit walknercondon.com.